So I'm here at the uh, garden outside the convention center at Lugano um, for the 15th uh, annual, uh, uh, biannual now uh, lymphoma conference. And um, uh, I've been asked to talk to you today about uh, ME401, a, a novel PI3 kinase delta inhibitor. Um, and you know, you might be asking yourself, what can be novel about a PI3 kinase delta inhibitor? We have a plethora of them, um, and there are at least two already approved. Um, and um, PI3 kinase inhibitors have been often written off by clinicians because they're too toxic. Um, and, uh, you know, however, these are a very active group of drugs, uh, particularly in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and follicular lymphoma. This is actually an important class of drug, and we don't want to discard a class of drug because we haven't figured out how to manage toxicity. Um, and ME401 is unique in that it has an extremely long half-life. So the half-life is 28 hours. Um, and if you do PK modeling, um, and based on the murine uh, model of uh, absorption of drug into tumor, if you dose patients with ME401 for a week, you're essentially exposing tumor to two weeks of drug. And so that led the conception of an intermittent schedule. So when we started the development of ME401, we did continuous dosing like every other PI3 kinase delta inhibitor. We did a, a traditional phase one and identified, uh, we went from 60 to 180 milligrams oral daily and actually found that 60 milligrams uh, was a perfect dose um, that because it uh, way exceeded the 90% inhibition of the BAT assay, which was the PK, PD marker for activity of the drug. Um, but uh, there was significant adverse events related to uh, immune-related toxicities from uh, the PI3 kinase inhibitor, like we have seen with Duvel and Idelilicin. Um, and so the question was, was there a way to avoid this? Um, one of the things that was uh, seen in the early drug development is virtually everyone who was going to respond responded by two months. Um, and so uh, we proposed a change in scheduling that people would get continuous dosing for two months and then would have an intermittent schedule of one week on, which again, as I said, is about two weeks of tumor exposure and, uh, and then three weeks off. By having this intermittent schedule, the hypothesis was that we could reduce toxicity but maintain efficacy. Um, and uh, so that fortunately is what we've seen. Overall, 71 patients with follicular lymphoma and CLL have been treated, 17 patients with CLL, 54 patients with follicular lymphoma, and um, the uh, overall response rate in CLL is 100%. The uh, overall response rate in follicular lymphoma is 80%. Um, I want to caution people. We know that this is an active class of drug, so somewhat better patients were treated on this study than some of the older PI3 kinase delta inhibitors, so I'm not trying to say this is clearly more active. They're all very active, um, uh, so the 80% overall response rate in follicular lymphoma is very good, but I think it might be patient selection. So we've got to be careful and we want to be honest. Um, but the intermittent schedule is really quite interesting. So uh, 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 early on in the program, um, we switched to this intermittent scheduling um, and now have been able to study the intermittent schedule um, and have seen two important things. People on continuous dosing um, had a shorter median uh, exposure to drug um, uh, with only um, less than half of patients still on drug with continuous dosing, whereas uh, uh, 75 to 80 percent of patients on the intermittent schedule may uh, continue on drug. Um, and that's because we're seeing significantly less grade 3, 4 adverse events. Um, if we look at a, a cumulative event curve, um, there is a substantially lower risk of uh, grade 3, 4 adverse events um, with the intermittent schedule. Um, and if we look at the overall incidence, um, with the continuous schedule, it's 38%. With the intermittent schedule, it's 16%. Um, one of the most important ones that people worry about is the grade 3-4 diarrhea. 
um, which is now under 10 percent um, with the intermittent scheduling, where it was uh, twice that uh, with the continuous scheduling. So by using an intermittent schedule, we've been able to reduce the toxicity. But what about efficacy? And the nice thing is we've been able to maintain efficacy. 78% of patients who started intermittent dosing remain on intermittent dosing with uh, uh, continued benefit. Um, and, uh, but what about the people who've come off? So 20 patients have switched back from intermittent dosing to continuous dosing, either because of true progression based on IWCLL or um, uh, Lugano criteria, or clinical sense of progression. Um, I've had patients where the lymph nodes are growing, they haven't quite met I, uh, uh, Lugano criteria for progression, but they're clearly progression and we've switched them back to continuous dosing. One of the interesting things is that about uh, 70 to 80% of patients who switch back to continuous dosing um, actually recapture their response. So this small group, 20%, who need to go from uh, intermittent to continuous, um, of those, 80% of them are recapturing their response um, and with a very low grade three, four toxicity rate. So of the 20 patients who went from uh, intermittent to continuous, only three um, have had grade three, four um, AEs. Um, and so that's actually uh, quite promising. Um, and the uh, response recapture rate is high enough that we feel that this is a really interesting way of, uh, make, of sort of revitalizing this class by providing an effective intermittent schedule. But for those few patients where the intermittent schedule just isn't appropriate, we're switching back to continuous dosing. Now, who are those people? Why do they need continuous dosing? What are the differences? Can we predict who they are? Those are all excellent questions, and they're going to be uh, answered in future studies. Um, and one of the studies that's going to be done is actually a randomized phase two study of continuous versus intermittent dosing um, to find out um, some of the answers to these questions.